Amen. So I'm happy about that. Let's do this. Let's get into the word of faith. And I'm, I'm blessed again because so many people have been teach and talking about this particular teaching right now. Not that I was going to even stay there. You know, I just, the Holy Spirit just been dealing with me with this to encourage the body more than anything. I want to encourage the body of believe, especially when you know you're on the right track. There are certain things that will try to get you off track, get you off focus. So you got to understand something in this season of your life. God has done too much for you. I'm telling you, saints, I'm a pastor, so I deal with people every day. And some people that have went away from the faith and knowing they went away from the faith and they want to get back to the faith. And it's a fight sometimes when you go away from the faith. It's a, it's a fight. And the Bible said in the last days, the very elect's going to be full. And so when you're connected to the body, you better stay connected. Because the enemy, what he did to Jesus, when he took him on that mountain, he said, if you come down, this is what I give you. And so a lot of time, the enemy do everything in his power to get you out of your, and this, I've been dealing with this teaching on consistency. He'll get you out of your consistency because it's very important. Now make sure, I, 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 this is about the third week I've been talking about it, but make sure you keep this in your spirit. Consistency brings about a level of maturity. When you're consistent now, it brings about a level of maturity. That is that is something that I want you to make, make sure you get in your spirit. You have to be consistent and you have to watch God do certain things. And, and make sure you get this here now as you as you're writing that, but make sure you get this here because I'm gonna try to do everything tonight. Last last Wednesday, the Holy Spirit just moved in so many ways. But um I'm gonna try to do everything I can give you tonight if the Lord permits me to. Uh, because one thing about it, I've been I've been doing some teaching here these past couple of days and having to get prepared for some some major uh teaching. Uh, but I don't want to never leave the church out. Don't let things move you from your pattern of consistency. I want you to get that in your spirit. It's very important now. And all of this requires much prayer now. Okay, I want you to make sure as a believer now, all of this, it requires much prayer. Prayer. Don't let things move you from your pattern of consistency. Okay, very important that you get this year. Uh, it's a principle. Consistency is a principle now. Always acting or behaving the same and doing things in the same way. When you're consistent, you're always acting the same. You're not changing. You might have trials. You might have some tests. You might go through things in life, but someone, people will always be able to see consistency in you. They will always be able to see consistency in you. And you want to make sure you keep that in your spirit, okay? So these are some things. Root it. You're rooted. You're grounded in, in, in certain principles. I want you to get this in your spirit too. You get rooted, you get grounded in certain principles. Certain things don't move you, certain things don't change you. Because you're being led by not Mark Baker, not by greater work, you're li being led by the spirit. Them that are led by the spirit, they are sons of God, okay? So you wanna make sure you keep that. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not moved by my children. I love my children. I thank God for my sons and my daughters. I always tell my children this here, uh, you know, one thing about it, I'm not gonna go against my morals and beliefs to keep relationships. Amen. No, I, my, 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 my daughter's here right now, my son's here, they'll tell you real quick, let's, I have to live that principle out. I do not go against my morals and my beliefs because I have beliefs, I believe God, I know what God has done in my personal life. So you wanna make sure you keep this pattern of consistency. Consistency is very, very important for your life, especially in the area of prayer, in the area of fasting. That's what I was telling you uh, on Sunday and I've been telling you down these weeks now. When you have a call, when you have a gift, you have to make sure you understand at times when your call is not being used or your gift is not being used. I'm not in the church for me to be recognized. You know, I preach all over the country right now, but I'm not always trying to get in nobody's pulpit. I want to sometimes, like my brother back there, Earl Flynn, he's a musician. He travels all over this country, but he's not trying to jump up there on that keyboard. At times I need ministering to myself. Okay, so, so it's not about no one recognizing my call. I just want to make sure my heart is always in, in the kingdom. Gifts and callings are without repentance. I can share that with you in the book of Ephesians. God will let you keep operating in your gift. But their heart, the Bible says, people praise me with their lips and honor me with their mouth. But their hearts are far from me. So you want to make sure that everything that you do, your heart is in this. You know, the Bible says, the love of God has been poured where? In my heart by the Holy Spirit. That's how it is. So let's make sure we get this in our spirit. Consistency is about being disciplined again. Make sure you get that. Now I'm disciplined in an area. First Corinthians chapter nine, uh, around by verse number 27. Uh, I want you to see that on the screen real quickly. I discipline my body. I want you to make sure you get this here. I discipline my body. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you got in the New Living Translation. I thought it was something different there. 
Okay, put it in the, in the King James Version, then I want to take it into the uh, Amplified Version. But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become a dis or become disqualified. Different translations get me. One translation said cast away. But I like disqualified too. But the Amplified Version, put it from the Amplified Version, that one there. You know, but like a boxer, I buffet my body, handling it roughly, discipline it by hardship, and subdue it for fear that after proclaiming to others the gospel and things pertaining to it, I myself should become unfit, not stand the test, be unapproved, and reject it as a counterfeit. So if you read the whole, you read about, 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 about seven verses, probably starting in verse number 24 in that area of that, you used to see what Paul was saying. He's like an athlete, like a boxer, you know. I don't, I don't beat, I don't fight like one who's just beating the air. I got a, I got a aim, I got, I, got some, I got a target that I'm, I'm going at, you know. So I got, this is why I'm, I'm, I'm teaching this area right now so we can understand what it means to be consistent again but now also understand, avoid these distractions. These distractions are something, especially when you got purpose. You got to understand when you got purpose, when you have an assignment, when you have a purpose, when you have to fulfill, I'm not talking about being a pastor, I'm not talking about preaching, in your home, on your job, as an entrepreneur, business person, whatever it is, you got to stay focused. You cannot be distracted by what everybody else is doing. Sometimes when people tell me, ask me certain things what certain churches do, I learned it from Dr. Frederick K.C. Price. Certain things churches do is not that they're wrong, not nothing, not, nothing. But what they might be doing might not be my assignment. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. See, I know my script. This is why I always tell people, see, I know my script. I know what I've been called to do. I've been called to teach faith, holiness, and finances. So I have to stick to that assignment. If not, I'll be trying to prove to other people how much Bible I know. And I don't want to try to prove to people how much Bible I know. I just want to know what my assignment is. Right. And if I can stay focused on what God called me to do, uh -huh. I'm going to win. Right. If you know that God called you to raise them churn, raise them churn. Right. You know God called you to be faithful in a certain area of your life, be faithful in that area. Right. Watch this year. I want to make sure you get this year. Growth comes from practicing consistency. And that's why I shared with you early distractions, again, it comes to prove what you value. See, distraction is coming to try to pull you away from certain things that is important. Your spiritual development, your spiritual growth is important. It's, it's important that I grow, that I get developed in this area. I got to get developed in this area. When I knew I was called to minister the word of faith like this year, when God called me to preach in 1996 and God told me I had to stay on G Street for like three years before I could even go out and preach and everything, because he was telling me you got to lay a foundation. I want some of y'all to get some of your spirit right now. God is trying to get you to lay a foundation of faith. Get this now. You got the latest foundation of faith. So when tests and trials come because your foundation has been laid with faith, you are not moved by situations. I want y'all to get something I'm trying to tell you right now because distractions gonna come and distractions only come to try to pull you away from what's important. But if you get rooted, if you get grounded in your faith, you won't be moved by the trials. You won't be moved by the tests. Watch your James chapter one. We know it, but verse number two. And as I said, I'm trying to give you everything that I feel like the Lord wants me to give you. James chapter one, verse number two. My brothers, watch this thing. This goes to every believer. You know my word again. No one is exempt from trials. No one is exempt from a test. That's why I want to get back into the book of Galatians as well. If you find another brother over the taking in a fault, you with your spiritual, restore them. Amen. One translation really say, considering yourself. Don't be rejoicing when you see somebody miss the mark. Amen. Hallelujah. And we're in this technology day, and I mean everything is social media, everything is Facebook. If you do something today before five seconds, everybody know about it. Amen. Oh, I wish I had a win. That's why you got to be careful. You got to be cautious in this season of your life. My brothers, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And again, it's not if you fall in them, when you fall in them. Watch this again, because no one is exempt from trials. Just look at your neighbor, tell them, say, you too. No one is exempt from trials now. No one is exempt from trials. No one is exempt from a test. That's why if you know God is blessing you, you better give him all the praise and all the glory. 
Come on, y'all. I'm serious about that now. I need 30 people right now. I know that the Lord has opened up a door for me, has made a way for me, has provided for me. 30 people just give him a praise right now for the provisions that he has. Watch this shit. I had to teach this other night. Because why someone asked me the other day, I had to teach this because I did it God's way. I wasn't better than nobody. I just, when I got into the word of faith, Matthew 6 and 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then all the other things will be added to you. I had to get that in my spirit. What? Seek what? Seek the kingdom. I need someone to guide me. I need someone like in the book of Acts the Apostle. I need someone to guide me. Show me how to seek the kingdom. Find out what the kingdom has need of you. Look at your neighbor and say, the kingdom has need of you now. I'm going to tell your neighbor again, say, the kingdom does have need of you now. You might, you might don't sing in the choir. You might not be a, a great singer. You might not be a great alto, a great soprano, a great tenor, whatever. And you might not be a good hostess or uh, usher. Because you got to smile. You got to greet people. We don't need nobody on the door. We know right there. No, you don't supposed to be on that door. You're going you gonna to run the saints away. We need somebody smiling. We need somebody happy. We need somebody saying, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and, and into his course with some praise. We are so happy that you are with us on this morning. Am I right about it? You might can't pray. Don't get up there and try to pray. Who, who prayed tonight? I wasn't in here tonight. Deacon Gene prayed. Don't try to pray like Deacon Gene. You lose your breath up there. <laughs> Especially the 30 minutes. I want to pray. Okay, all right. And all of that is okay, but I'm telling you, without the spirit, you're not going to do it anyway. There's much need in the kingdom for you. Go back to that James chapter one, please. Go back to James chapter one, verse number two. Just go back to that. Kind of Lord job when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith uh, produces patience. But let patience, that's, that's that, that word there again, endurance or perseverance. That, that's what that word, and watch this here again. I want y'all to get this here because it's very important to you get this here. Go back to verse number three again. Go back to verse number three real quick. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Let go of that word there, that patient, patient, endurance. That, that word really means endurance. That word means perseverance. That means God's giving me the ability to last. Everybody again cannot last. Amen. That's why I say again, people have callings, people have giftings. And when their calling is not being used or things not their way, they will take their calling and they will leave because their heart was never in it. It's just the truth. Because what James says again, go back to verse number two again. My brother is kind of all joy when you fall into various trial. Everyone is going to be tested. In your home, on your job. Glory to God. And tell your neighbor, say, I love the church. I ain't talking about greater works. I'm talking about the universal church, the blood watch church of Jesus Christ. 30 people give God praise. I'm not talking about GWM. I'm talking about the blood watch church of Jesus Christ. Tell your neighbor, say, I love the church. You, how dare you talk about the church? I slap you upside your head to talk about the church. Jesus paid a price. Come on, you all. He paid a price for the church. He paid a price for the church. He paid a price for the church. How dare you talk about his church? He said, upon this rock I build my church and the gates of hell should not prevail again. Oh, you just saying it because you're the pastor. I said it before I was a pastor. I love the church. 30 people giving praise. I love the church. It, 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 hallelujah. I love the saint. We all cuckoo. We all got some issues. Don't walk around here and act like you ain't got none. Don't walk around here and act like you got it all together. We ain't nothing but brothers and sisters. If you got a brother or sister, you know all y'all got some kind of issues. One of y'all done missed the boat. Something happened. Hallelujah. Maybe the doctor didn't spank you right when you came in the world, but something happened. Glory to God. We the blood washed church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, don't make me go there. God love the church. I don't even like to hear people talking about you wanna you wanna grow, get church hurt. How that sounds. I wouldn't want to go to church if somebody tell me talking about the church hurt me. What about that job did to you? You ain't leave it. Am I right? You spent 30, 40 years there. You went there and you did your job. 
Well, come to church and do your job. Y'all ain't got to say amen. You got hope? Come on, y'all. Let's talk. Let's get real with this thing. You go to work. You deal with stuff. You deal with it for eight hours. And you can't even deal with it an hour in the church. Hallelujah, y'all. Let me get off of that because I love the church. I love the church. Not because I'm a pastor again. I love the church. It's what I was taught to love the church. I was taught to do everything I can to support the church. Hallelujah. And in the process of doing that, watch this, my consistency, it called about a growth in my personal life or the development in my life that I just did not know certain things that God has done in my life. The, the system couldn't have taught it to me. It was the church. I'm successful because of the church. And I ain't afraid to say I'm successful neither. I'm not even afraid to say that I'm blessed. Y'all ain't got to say amen. If you know you're blessed, just give God a praise if you know you're blessed. Thank you. If you know you're blessed. Hallelujah. You think I'm going to apologize for what I know only God did? I know you're tired of me talking about that $3.5 million, but I'm going to give God praise because I know only God could have did it. Thank you. We're about to construct a new building. We're about to build a new building here. And that building there is an amazing building. I know only God could do it. So I got to stay focused. Distractions are coming, but I got to stay focused. God told me, say, it's almost like a car. You know, I'm not a mechanic or anything, but he told me it's almost like a car. Once the wheels, once wheels get out of alignment, you can keep on driving. You think you're doing good. You can never see what's tearing on the inside, but you see it tearing on the outside. I can't see everything going on the inside of some people, but the outside is show showing. You are out of alignment. You need some. Oh, y'all don't want to. Some. Oh, y'all. Y'all miss what I'm trying to. Y'all miss what I'm trying to tell you. Sometimes Deacon McLeod, you're going straight, but you're still out of alignment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You're out of alignment. You got to take it in the shop. You got to get them wheels balancing. You ought to know the bumps going on in your life. I was riding the other day, my son said, I was riding with Richard the other day, and I said, boy, something wrong with this car. And the more he gave it gas, I can see that. I said, man, these wheels need some. And that's when the Holy Ghost told me. He said, that's like the saints. When they get out of alignment. You can't, and I looked at, that, looked at the tire, you can't even see on the inside. It's on the outside. Some people are just as confused on the outside. They're trying to do stuff in the spirit on the inside, but the outside is all messed up. I can't even receive from you because you're talking about everybody. I can't even receive from you because one minute you're laying your hands, and one minute you're lifting your hand, but then the next minute you're on social media and you're talking about everybody. I can't see who you are. You must be out of a line. Got to get back in there. Got to get back lined up. Got to get back lined up. You can't, you can't let certain things get you out of line there. It's going to show on the outside. You can't see on the inside, but it's going to show on the outside. Look at your neighbor next to you and tell him, say, God is about to do something in your life. I want you to write this down. Consistency and commitment requires sacrifice. Thank you. It, it requires sacrifice. I'm committed. Everybody else might not be committed. Everybody else might throw the towel in. Everybody, everybody else might say, I'm done with it. I'm done with my marriage. I'm done with my children. No, I can't be done with it. You looking at people where they at. You can't look at people where they at. When God get through with them, Thank you, Mother White. When God get through with them, you can't, you can't do that. You got to stay committed. You got to stay committed in the kingdom. You can't let nothing just snatch you out the kingdom in this season. I preached last year, and that, that thing just stays with me. The kingdom is a priority. Watch this here, and I want to make sure you get this here again. When the kingdom is first priority in your life, nothing is a force. 
It's only, I'm telling you all, I've been saying this here for a few years, but I'm telling you, as a man of God, I see it so much. When people start moving from the kingdom, that's when all the cares of the world, they start carrying them. You start carrying how you're going to pay your bill. You go to Karen. Now, you know what? This is what blessed me. Galatians 3 and verse number 1. We all know, but watch this here. This blessed me so much about Galatians. Oh, foolish Galatians. Watch this here. Who has bewitched you? This is not even what I want to just want. I just want you to see how it start. Who bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? But whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? Watch this here. This only I want to learn. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit of the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Are you so foolish having begun in the spirit? Are you now made perfect in the flesh? You first believed me. You started in the spirit. But now you don't need me. Now you're trying to tell me how to operate stuff. Oh, this... What he says, he said, are you so foolish having begun? First, you trusted me. You did everything my word said. But now, uh, put it from the message Bible. Put, the, put those three verses from the message Bible. Yeah, there we go. You crazy Galatians. Did someone put a hex on you? Have you taken leave of your senses? Something crazy has happened. For it's obvious that you no longer have the crucified Jesus clear focus in your lives. His sacrifice on the cross was certainly set before you clearly enough. Let me put this question to you. How did you, how did your new life begin? Was it by working your heads off to please God? Or was it by responding to God's messages to you? Are you going to continue this craziness? For only crazy people would think they could complete by their own efforts. What was begun by God. If you weren't smart enough or strong enough to begin it, how do you suppose you could perfect it? Did you go through this whole painful learning process for nothing? It is not yet a total loss, but it's certain will be if you keep this up. It's just like me. I got saved, gave my life to Christ. All I know was whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now I'm gonna call on another name when I know it was only one name given under heaven whereby men must be saved. Somebody gonna now pull me to some type of other religion. Ain't no other religion saved me but Jesus. Ain't no, come on somebody, ain't nobody, that's the name that I call on. When I was broke, busted, and disgusted, I knew I took a hold of his principles, and I learned his principles, and now they're working in my life, and I'm going to let somebody pull me from that? I can't do it. I'm not that smart. I wasn't smart when I first started it. So now I want to be like smart. I know everything now. I still want to be a child. When I come into his presence, I still want to be a boy. I still want to just tell him, without you, I can't do it. Is there 30 people right now? I can't even pay my bill without you, God. I can't even raise my family without you, God. Come on, saints. I am not that smart. I just, I can't do it without you, God. I need the, the old saints sung that years ago. Every hour. Come on, saints. I need thee, Lord. Is that 30 people right now can just say, I need you. I, I need you, Lord. I need you in every area of my life. Watch this here. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Watch this here. This, this area, oh, James keep hitting me again. Go back to James chapter 1. I'm almost done. We'll go back to James chapter 1. Thank you, Holy Spirit. James chapter 1. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patient endurance or perseverance. Now, some translation probably um, put, put it from the Put it from the Amplified Version. Go back to verse number one. Yeah, yeah. Consider it holy, uh, joyful, my brother, whenever you are enveloped in or encounter trials of any sort or fall into various temptations. Be assured, 
here we go, and understand that the trial and proving of your faith brings about, here we go, endurance and steadfastness and patience. Watch this here again. He's going to give you the ability to last all what you're going through. I don't know who you are, and I want to get this over to you tonight. Whatever God has entrusted in your hand, whatever God is about to do in your life, he's going to give you the ability under all circumstances and under all trials to go through it. And this is what I heard all these past couple of days since Sunday night, I think it was. God is teaching you to lay a foundation of faith. God is wanting you to lay a foundation of faith. Because if you can lay this foundation of faith, you can stand up under every trial. You can stand up under every test. And you'll be like the old saying, you will not be moved. Amen. Even if the money is not even coming in, you'll have so much crazy faith that my God shall supply all of my needs. Oh, I with 30 people could just, I mean, even, even with crisis and situations going on, everything that's going on in your life, you'll be standing on your faith. You'll be just saying, I'm rooted and I'm grounded in my faith. I will not be moved. I'm not going to be moved by this situation. I'm going to stay focused on what God has called me to do. And focus breeds resentment. Yeah. I want you to get that. Because people know you're focused. People know you're focused. People will dag you. They will try to do everything to get on your last nerve. But if you stay focused and give no energy or attention to it, you always see victories. I want you to get this in your spirit. This is, this is very important to you. This is very, very important to some people right now tonight that God is telling me to let you know tonight. If you build this foundation of your faith, I don't care what trial, what test you go through, you're going to be able to stand under it. You got to stay focused. You got to stay focused in this season. You got to stay focused. Yes, things are going on, but I cannot be moved by this. I cannot be moved by this. There's certain things that I have went through in my personal life. I cannot allow no one to hold me hostage for any little trip up that I might have made in my life. Y'all ain't got to say amen. You know, no people will hold you hostage. You done got forgiveness from God. You done prayed and asked God to forgive you. And if you're hurting anybody, if you're offended in anybody, some people still ain't going to get over it. But you better stay so focused and say, God, I done gave that to you. And I got to keep pressing toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. I can't be moved by this distraction. I got to go forward. Paul say, I'm forgetting the thing which is behind me. I got to reach forward to the thing which is before me. Your consistency will bring about prosperity. Let me say it like I feel it in my spirit. Can I say it again to you? Your consistency will bring about prosperity. That's in every area of your life. Hallelujah. And you will live a life stress-free. You will live a life struggle-free. And that's why it's bringing about resistance. People, they look at you and they can't even celebrate with what God has done for you because you've been focused. Keep your eyes focused, saints. Grab your neighbor and say, I don't know what he's going to do for the years out, but he's going to do something huge in your life. You better stay focused on what God is going to do in your life. Don't worry about what you done been through in 2019. 2020 is a year of nothing but vision for you. You better open up your mouth. I say 2020 is nothing but vision. That's why it's called 2020 vision. The devil trying to cause you to abort your vision. 30 people, you better praise them because you got a vision and it's got to get in the earth. And it's got to get in the earth. And you might be feeling some resistance. You might be feeling some things that's trying to get you off focus, but you cannot get off focus in this season. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all better stay focused in this season. I said you better stay focused in this season. You know what keeps me so focused, Mother White? Because the, the, the foundation that I got when I came up in the old church, when the, when the saints used to sing songs on Friday night, terror night service, they used to sing songs like so many falling by the wayside. Lord, help me to stand. Take me by my hand and lead me on. Hallelujah. They used to sing songs like, oh, I, I want to go where Jesus is. Y'all ain't got to say amen. Hallelujah. 
They used to sing them songs. He's a battle act. In the times of battle. Sanctified church, you say, come on over. On the Lord's side. It's a done got over. Y'all ain't got to say, I told you I got a foundation. So when my trials and my tests come, y'all ain't got to say amen. I got so much root in me, I can stand under any trial. And if I have to scratch out one of my hymns, I can do one of them too. Father, I scratch my hand to do. No other help I know. If I would draw thyself from me, where shall I go? I don't have to stop there. Must Jesus bear this cross alone and all the world go free? No, there's a cross for everyone and there's a cross for me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. I got another one. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and grief the best. You better stop because I feel it. Am I a soldier of the cross? A follower of the Lamb? And shall I fear the on his call? I bless to speak his name. Must I be carried to the sky on flower beds of Eve while others fought the price and sailed through bloody sea? You better, you better leave me alone because I got, I got a foundation that when I get into some situation and I'm all by myself, I can sing songs and melody unto the Lord. Y'all ain't got to say nothing to me. I can say it. I don't have to fight. Fight back. I don't have to, because I found out they told me, fight my battle, Lord. I know you know how to fight it. Ooh, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. I ain't got to say amen. <laughs> Woo, God, I feel God going to push some people into another level tonight. I don't care what you're going through. Open up your mouth and give God 30 seconds of some praises tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Don't care. Hallelujah. I don't, don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Some people ask me all the time, say, how do we always come back? I got, I, I'm rooted. I'm rooted. I'm rooted. I'm grounded. I believe God. I believe his word. I'm not trying to make the modern day church go through what I went through or listen to what I had. To it, it helped me. My daddy used to sing a song when I was a boy. I, was I used to stand next to him. He used to sing a song, Chariot, Let Me Ride. Come on, Ron. My daddy used to sing a song, Chariot, Let Me Ride. Chariot, Slow down, Chariot. Lord, I'm chariot. Want to see Jesus. Want to see Jesus. Chariot. Chariot. Want to ride holy. When you say another thing, you say it like this here. When you see me coming. Got him on my mind. Got him on my mind. Oh, when you see me coming. Oh, I got Jesus on my mind. Don't start out. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down. Glory, glory. Yee. I feel better. So much better. Since I laid. Every round of gold, higher and higher. Stop, Jason. Every round of gold, since I led mine. Yeah, yeah. I 
I feel good, y'all. You better leave me alone. I got a foundation. Give your neighbor high five. Say, I got one. I got one. I got it. I got a, you can't touch me, you can't bother with me. I got a foundation, y'all. Hallelujah. One more can he do? One more can he do? He done laid the foundation. Open up the way, one more. One more can he do? One more can he do? Look at the map. He done laid the foundation. Open up the way. One more. Leave me alone. Leave I run on. See what the end. Leave I run. Give your neighbor a high five. I got to go, y'all. Tell him say, I got a foundation. I got a, I got a foundation. I said, I got, I don't know a lot of stuff, but I got a foundation. This is what keep me going. This is what keep me going. Look at your neighbor and tell him, say, get a foundation. Get a foundation. Get a foundation. Get a foundation. Mm, glory to God. Give the Lord another clap of praise. Y'all done. Y'all got me feeling good up in here. I told you brought my roots out for a moment there. Give the Lord 30 seconds of nothing but a praise again. Come on, come on, 30 more, 30 seconds. Yeah, 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 come on, y'all, give it to him. I just heard him say I didn't have it to praise it. I'm sitting up with some stuff right now. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all, open up your mouth and give him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand to your feet. I don't want to hold you too much. I have more to give you, but I'm on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They say that if Jesus can't fix it, nobody can. Lift those hands. Stay consistent, saints. Stay consistent. Pray for your brothers and your sisters. Pray for your brothers and your sisters in the body of Christ. I literally, and I want, and I, I heard the Lord said, I mean, seriously, pray for your brothers and sisters. You mess around and the enemy, he don't play fair, saints. He don't play fair. The Bible say he's a thief. He's a, he come to steal, kill, and destroy. We're living in the last days, and I believe the last days that Many men's hearts would wax cold. That's the word there. They will heap up sound doctrines, seducing spirits. They would not even want to hear the truth. They go about establishing their own righteousness. And the Bible says, not the righteousness of God. Stay consistent. Stay consistent. Thank God what he brought you out of. I tell people all the time, thank God for him taking the desire away from you. The things that used to pull you away from the things of God. I tell people that all the time. I, I, often, I deal with it so much. I tell people all the time. I say even family members and loved ones. I say we might don't always agree on everything, but let's don't talk about my beliefs. I tell other religions, 
Sometimes I know friends, I got people that I know personally who are Muslims and everything, and we can talk. I was talking to another person today of another religion. We never brought up religion. Because I am firm persuaded in what I believe. I believe it. I believe in giving. I believe it. I believe in the work of ministry. I believe in sowing. I believe in tithing. I believe in loving my neighbor. I believe in doing good to them that despitefully use me. That's a part of my life. Nobody forces me to do that. It's the Holy Spirit. Somebody telling you, they don't like you. you. You better just get in your mind. They do like me. They, 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 really, they really can't understand how you're doing what you're doing. We're about to build, saints. We have to stay focused. We're not doing something for us. We're doing this for the kingdom. Come on, 30 people. Come on, y'all. We're doing this for the kingdom. We're doing this for another generation. We're doing this for another generation, Minister Slay, that one day going to rise up and say that there was someone thought about us. We're not going to wait for 30, 40 more years for another generation to come up and do what we could do. We're going to trust God. We're going to believe God. And I want to speak over everyone tonight. And I have to, and I hear the Lord saying, you can do this. I want to speak over everyone tonight that seems like certain things going on in your finances. I want to speak over your finances tonight. Now, that might not be everybody, but I want to speak over everyone that seems like the enemy is trying to backdoor you in your finances. The Lord told me to tell you tonight, no weapon even in your finances is going to prosper. No weapon even in your finances. And I'm telling you, whoever you are tonight, God told me to tell you, he going to bring you out of this situation. You ain't got to say amen. If you sit there and wait on somebody else and you know that word was for you, you better move because God done told me to tell you, he's going to even move on your finances. He's going to, oh God, he said, say it. I'm going to even move on your credit. Somebody get it. Just move if you got to. Don't play with it. 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 God told me to tell you tonight. I'm telling you. I'm speaking this over you. I'm speaking this over your finances tonight. I'm speaking this over things that you are responsible for. Can I say that like that? Things that you are responsible for. I have men of God right now across this country. They pray for me a lot, especially in the area of my finances. One reason why, because they know what I'm responsible for. See, in, in, in the consistency of it, Sister Murray, the consistency of it is I can't look at 2019 because I know that there are more years that God has that he is so desiring to bless me. If I get caught up in a blessing from 2019, I don't know what 2020 hold. I tell people that all the time. I was, I, I was writing my tithes out yesterday and I was sending them off yesterday. And when I sent my tithes off, I mean, it, it, to me, I said, God, I know the enemy don't want me to do this. I'm gonna speak this to some of you all tonight. And I'm serious too, because I can say it personally. Every time I write my check or every time my tithes go out, first thing they'd ever tell me, say, you gonna send that? When I know this is what got me what I got, when I know it, I'm afraid. Everything I got belongs to God. The air that I'm breathing, Dr. Price told us this years ago, he could have charged me for the air I'm breathing. He could have. And he blessed me. Maybe nobody else can't shout and praise him about this one. But watch this year. Watch this year again. Seriously. We built this church 14 years ago. And it was a 30-year mortgage. And God wiped it out in 14 years. Through giving. I, I'd be crazy to stop it. Nisa, I'd be crazy to stop it. I'd be crazy to go to now to selling chicken. Go to now to selling fish. Go to now doing certain things that. I'd be crazy. My bill's been paid on time. I'd be crazy to stop doing what I know got me there. But yeah, Jackie, okay. To be able to pay a mortgage for 14 years and never was laid on it? Never had to refinance this church? 
I only got to say amen. Never had to pull the equity and all that stuff. What people say. Never had to do none of that stuff. That's why I want to pray over your finances tonight. And I want to pray over some areas of your personal life tonight. And I'm standing in agreement with you. Amen. I said, I'm standing in agreement with you. Amen. Your baby going off to school this year, didn't he? Your baby went off to school. Full scholarship. Full scholarship. Wait a minute. Say it again, daughter. He got $132,000 over the next four years. And you mean to tell me I watched that baby grow in this church? I watched that baby grow. You right, Nisa? You got a right to cry. You got a right to give him some glory. You got a right to give him some honor. I watched this baby grow. I can call the baby because I watched her grow. I watched her commitment. I watched her dedication. I watched it. Serving the Lord that Tank taught us early in it, it'll pay off. My bishop told me before he went on to be with the Lord, he said, I know the Lord was going to bless you. I knew the Lord was going to bless you. I knew the Lord was going to make this thing sweatless for you. I knew the Lord was going to make this thing effortless for you. And I'm saying this to every believer. I'm telling you, I'm saying this to every believer. This year, I probably hadn't even touched it as much. I haven't, and I know I haven't. So y'all pray with me. But I'm a firm believer and God wants his people blessed. I'm a firm believer in it. I'm a firm believer in it. I'm a firm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if I do right by God, if I sow my seed, October, when we saw the sacrificial seed in October, that's personal. You give what God, well, you give whatever you please to God. Somebody said, well, why we give? Because we're giving into our future. Seed get planted to go into future. Hallelujah. When I sow seed, I don't expect to get a harvest tomorrow or today when I sow it. I got enough God kind of faith to wait on it. Amen. What God want to do in you is huge. Jasmine, it's huge. As a young daughter, it's huge. Anna, it's huge. Jason, it's huge. It's huge. Paul, it's huge. Stay faithful. Stay committed. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to pay off after a while. It's going to pay off after a while. Am I right? It's going to pay off after a while. You're going to see it. Just the consistency of it. Don't get blessed and then start trying to say, oh, no, I don't take all this. Here. No. Before you got it, you was faithful. When God bless you, stay faithful. He blesses my life so much, I'm telling you, that I have to stay faithful. I have to stay faithful. I have to stay faithful. He's just an amazing God. That's it, Dr. Paul. He's just an amazing God. I pray over your life tonight. Father, I thank you for every one of these your believers are tonight. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that they are seeds of Abraham. I thank you that we are seeds of Abraham. No one can move us, God. No one can persuade us. We are persuaded by your word. That's a testimony that I just felt from my daughter tonight. That's something that she don't even have to worry about. Everything is paid. Somebody don't have that testimony. But because she's been faithful to you, God. Hallelujah, Lord. She can tell you, thank you for it, God. Hallelujah. Her child one day will be able to look back and say, Mama, what did you do? This just don't happen. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you that you will get such involved in people's finances. This Oh, this year is out. Go ahead and receive it. That's it. I don't have to pray this prayer. I could be selfish and keep it all to myself. But I'm praying this prayer over you tonight. I'm praying that God will move such in your finances. I'm praying that your children and your grandchildren and everyone else that's going through any financial situation in their life, I'm praying that God bring about a release for them. Hallelujah. I say I'm praying about a release for them. I'm praying for your granddaughter, your granddaughter, your grandson. I'm praying for your daughter. I'm praying for your son. I'm praying for you tonight that God gets so involved in your finances that you know God did it, that you don't have a problem with giving him praise. You don't have a problem with giving him glory. You don't have a problem with giving him honor. I can still go back. I told a guy just today, I think, I can go back to the first seed that I know broke property off of my life. 
I know the seed that did it. I know the seed that changed things in my life. I know that seed. I know that seed. I know that seed. I know the seed. I know the amount of that seed. Hallelujah. I saw how God started getting so involved in my finances because he saw my faith. He saw my faith. I believed him. Hallelujah. No one had to persuade me. No one had to beat it in my head. I believe that he loved a cheerful giver. I believe that he loved it a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. My whole family will tell you. I believe that he loved a cheerful giver. I believe he loved a hilarious giver. I believe he loved an eager giver. Hallelujah. When Solomon gave God a thousand burnt offerings, the Lord appeared to Solomon and asked Solomon, what do you want from me? And last time I read in the book of Acts chapter 10, he said, I'm no respecter person. I show no partiality. Imitate those through their faith and patient inherit their promises. There's always going to be someone in the earth that God's going to be able to let you see that if I did it for them, I would do it for you because I'm no respecter a person. I speak over your finances. I speak over your mortgage. I speak over your rent. I speak over the lease, whatever it is. I speak over your automobiles. I, I speak over hospital bills. I, come on, somebody. I speak over student loan debts tonight. And I speak in the name of Jesus. Release these debts of God's people. In the name of Jesus, free these young people from debts. Free them from credit cards, God. Free them tonight, God. In the name of Jesus, God. I speak this over your life tonight. I speak it over your life tonight. The very thing that is trying to hinder you and keep you from being a giver. The very thing that's trying to hold you back from sowing your seed. The very thing, it's a principle that God established through his word. And you will live these principles out. Then you will see your life become sweatless. You will see your life become effortless. You will see your life become struggle free. You will see it. Receive it, daughter. Receive it. You will see it. Financial pressure. I speak tonight. Be free tonight from every financial pressure over your life tonight. I'm speaking it over your business tonight. I'm speaking it over your home tonight. I'm anointed to do it. I got the all on me to do it. That's why I'm speaking it over you tonight. Hey, go bo shot out. That's it. That's right. Receive 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 it. Every need met for you. Every need met for you. Every glory to God. Every need met for you. I say every need met for you. In the name of Jesus. Every need met for you. Lay your hand. Hallelujah. I speak over you, Anna. I speak over you, Jason. I speak over you right now. In the name of Jesus. All financial pressure be lifted up. Come on. The Lord told me to tell you to receive that word. All financial pressure be released off of your life tonight. All financial pressure. All financial pressure. I'm telling you to receive that now. I want you to receive that tonight. All financial pressure be released off of your life tonight. Anything that try to come up against your finances. Hallelujah. You can't help but do right by God. Hallelujah. $132,000, four years full paid scholarship. You can't help but praise God. Glory to God. I speak over every financial area in your life. Be free tonight. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Receive it tonight. I say receive it tonight. I say receive it tonight. In the name of Jesus. See God getting involved in your finances. I say see him getting involved. Lay your hands on that daughter right there. She receiving it. She receiving it. Daughter, I speak to your spirit tonight. I speak to your spirit tonight. That God is going to give you chance. He's going to give you time to get some things together. Once you see God give you that time to get it together, immediately begin to obey God with your tithes. I was taught years ago by Frederick K.C. Price. He will give you time. You might can't do it right now, but clean up some of that stuff. Clean up some of that stuff. Clean it up. Clean up some of that stuff. And watch how your life get in order. Watch how your life get in order. I speak it over your life tonight. All financial pressure be released tonight. I speak it over you tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I had a multi, multi-millionaire come in my office a couple weeks ago. Hallelujah. He didn't have to come in my office for prayer, but he know where he's going, what he's doing. 
And as he came and got the blessing, hallelujah. And I speak that over every one of you tonight. That God will free you. It's going to be all right, daughter. I see it on you. But I decree, and I speak this over your life like I have spoke over many people. You honor God with your time. As the Lord bless you, you give him the 10%. As the Lord bless you, there might be some things you got to get cleaned up. Some things you want to try to get paid off. But God told me to tell you, he going to give you that time. But honor him with it. Honor him with it. Honor him with it. And you're going to see financial pressure leave you too. You're going to see financial pressure leave you now. I speak that over you tonight. The blessing of the Lord be upon your life. And the gift that you give to the Lord on tonight. And if you don't even have a gift to give God tonight, I still want you to touch the altar in faith tonight. I want you to touch that altar in faith. They taught me years ago. And pray that every time I get an opportunity to come to the house of God, that God give me a gift. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. Hallelujah in the house. So as you give tonight, and I said again, if you don't have a gift, I know some people say they wouldn't pray for people like that. But I pray for you, even if you don't have a gift. I pray that God will one day release such finances in your life that every time you come to the house of the Lord, you will be able to have a gift. If you purpose it in your heart, God will make it happen for you. I decree kingdom prosperity over your life tonight. In the name of Jesus. Lift your gifts to the Lord as the Lord has blessed you. As the Lord has blessed you. Lift your gifts to the Lord. As the Lord has blessed you. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for these gifts. We thank you for, yes we do. Yes we do, because it's for ministry. It's for your kingdom, God. We thank you for allowing us to bring our tithes, bring our offering, sow our seed into your kingdom. As you told me on today, God, that you can go outside of this kingdom and make something happen for me that I could not make happen for myself. Thank you for favor. Oh, I, I, I got a spirit of expectation tonight that you're going to do something special tomorrow. I don't know who it is for, but God, I got a spirit of expectation before the weekend is out. Thank you, Lord. Before the weekend is out, you're going to do something special, God. And I ain't going to wait to tell you thank you. I'm going to tell you thank you right now. I don't know who it is, but God told me to tell you to give him some praise right now. If I be a man of God, tonight God getting involved. Come on, Zion. Lay your gift at the altar. Hug somebody and tell them, say it's already.